All right. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hey, I'm Brother Brian here on KIEZ 106.7 FM, the voice of the community. Hey, today is a very special day. Uh, today is Mother's Day and also, but more so, we're going to bring in a special voice that's in the community each and every day, each and every week, each and every month, working, grinding it out, serving the community day by day, as they call it, boots or foot, feet on the ground, making it happen. Hey, we got a special guest today. We got Damian Coleman that's here. Good morning, Damian, or good afternoon, Damian. How are you, sir? Good afternoon, brother. I'm doing great. Uh, blessed to be here on this Mother's Day and uh, would like to wish everyone, uh, every mom, a happy Mother's Day. Ah, we, I know the, uh, uh, the mothers that definitely appreciate that. And as mothers actually go through life, giving life, giving birth to another human, uh, they tell me that is what your organization is doing in our community. The name of the organization is the Life Changers of Northeast Louisiana. So uh, welcome, again, welcome, Damien. But tell us a little bit about this organization and what do they do in the community? Well, our organization is an organization on the go. We are the life change the Northeast Louisiana, but our primary focus is helping the people that need it the most. There's a lot of people throughout our community that's struggling, a lot of people throughout our community that's facing hardship, um, let alone the pandemic has really, really made it hard on everyone. And so we just want to be that pillar in the community that people can depend on in a time of need, uh, in an emergency situation. We just want to be there to help whenever we can. Okay. Well, appreciate We all in the community appreciate that. And I know throughout the past couple of years, I've seen you in several community uh, meetings under the previous administration and under the current administration. Uh, yes, I haven't been that active under the current administration uh, because of the COVID situation. But mm -hmm. I know that and I've heard and I've seen on the local television station how you all are making an impact. You're reaching out to one of the subdivisions in our community. So tell us a little bit, bit about which what's taking place right now. Our main focus right now is Parkview, uh, Parkview Apartments down in Richwood Road, uh, 1101 Richwood Road. Um, Parkview itself is a big uh, complex, okay? The capacity is about 225 individuals all encased in this one place. And the violence and the murders have just gotten out of control. Uh, the violence is continuously escalating uh, the murder numbers are continuously escalating. And uh, from a citizen's point of view, from an organization's point of view, and also from uh, a citywide point of view, there's really not enough attention being shown to Parkview. And the acknowledgement of all the crime and the violence that's going on, it's really not being addressed in the way that it should be, given the fact that people are dying out there. And it's not only affecting adults, but it's also affecting our youth, our children, our juveniles, our kids. Okay, you're exactly right. I've been hearing a lot throughout the years. I'm not a native of Monroe, but I have been hearing uh, about some of the uh, situations that, that are currently going on in, in that small subdivision. And uh, from what I'm hearing is that some of the uh, barriers are being um, uh, uh, put on individuals in that community, making them a prisoner of that community, making them a victim of that community. And my understanding is that sometimes individuals in that community, they're seeking assistance and uh, attempting to find a way out of the mindset, out of the behavior, but mm -hmm. more so I'm understanding that some organizations like yours, like yours, uh, the one that you are, uh, that you run, you're going into that community attempting to make a change. And, mm -hmm. uh, but can you share with us specifically uh, what can individuals that in that community and also all other communities in a Washtenaw Parish, that, well, more so that you service, what specifically or how are you all making an impact? Well, right now, uh, our primary target is Parkview. Of course, we service the whole city of Monroe, anyone living in low income and poverty stricken areas throughout our city. But our main focus is Parkview 
Because like you said, uh, there are people in Parkview that are looking for help and that need resources, but they just can't get it. And when you look at Parkview and the distance where it's positioned at, um, we've done a demographic. Uh, we've done a study with the statistics and everything to really understand the challenges that the people in Parkview face. And if you look at an individual that's in an emergency situation um, to get from Parkview to Conway Hospital uh, for an individual that's, that's walking, you know, it takes approximately 28 minutes to uh, seek medical attention. Um, if you to look at the nearest resource center or the library or anything like that, uh, it takes about 15 to 16 minutes walking, but you still have the challenges of crossing dangerous 165 where at least five pedestrians are killed um, every year. Um, so there's, there's so many different uh, barriers and challenges that they have. And what we were planning to do and, and what kind of proposition we proposed to the city of Monroe and Standard Enterprise and anyone else uh, that can help is a Parkview Emergency Relief Center. And it's a place positioned either on the complex or in the near vicinity of Parkview that people can get the emergency assistance and help that they need. From what I'm told, when the young lady um, committed suicide and you know killed her children and everything, uh, God rest their soul, um, I'm told that she reached out for help. Uh, she, she was looking for help, but no one took it serious. And there was no immediate resource center or no uh, immediate counseling agency that she can reach out to to provide the help that she need that probably could have avoided uh, the situation that happened. And so many other instances in Parkview. Um, right now, there's a drug pandemic going on in Parkview and PCP and heroin is really devastating that community right now. And it's gonna take uh, people with professional uh, backgrounds to come in with us to help us to provide counseling, um, to provide emergency relief services, to provide some of the things that our organization is just not qualified to provide. We can help with food, we can help with housing, we can help with rental assistance, we can help with um, mentorship. There are so many things that we can help with, but the problem is much bigger than just our organization. And that's why I keep bringing the attention back to the city of Monroe and our city leaders is because before Parkview has always been violent, but before the murders escalated the way it has in the last two years, when it started, we presented ourselves to uh, the city council members about Parkview. And to be honest, I asked the city council members, I prayed before I went. And when I got there, I, I asked them, I said, I prayed and I asked God before I came here. I said, God, why do you keep sending me in front of your council? And why do you keep sending me in front of these people when they're not listening to us and they're not hearing us? And I said, God said, when you've done all that you can do to stand, still stand. And the spirit of God told me that if you just keep presenting yourself, I will make them hear you. Well, when, I, when we presented it to them, the city said there was nothing they can do because Parkview was a privately owned uh, company. It was on Standard Enterprise, the owners, to secure the facility and provide uh, whatever was needed. Um, so as time went on, the murders escalated, the, the violence escalated, things continued to happen. And all of a sudden, the city that said that there was nothing they can do um, provided moral polices down there uh, at the complex three days a week. Well, that's a good display, but that's not making a difference when people are still dying in the complex, okay? You have policemen outside of the fence. You need policemen inside of the gates, inside of the complex. Murders are not happening at the gate, they're happening inside. I watched a video, Brother Brian, where some girls were fighting in the middle of the complex and they turned the camera and you can see the Monroe Police Department security standing at the front gate, nonchalant about what's going on back there in the complex. And from the residents' point of view, I get so many complaints that they harassing the people that live there more than they're harassing the people that's coming back there to commit the crimes and do the acts of violence. Wow. Okay. Uh, Damien, you, you dropped a lot on us here. I'm going to see if we can break this down a little bit. Um, definitely, you mentioned about the 
complex itself, the the is privately owned by Standard Enterprise, mm-hmm. and of course, it sits in the in Ouachita Parish, sits mm-hmm. in the city of Monroe, and if I if I believe it sits maybe in District Five, maybe or District Four, mm-hmm. District Five, yeah, District Five, I believe. Okay, it sits in District Five, and with that, uh, the individuals that are in the community they're asking for additional resources in order for them to assist themselves in becoming independent. And you, you, you brought up a lot of uh, great points. The transportation barrier, the, um, the law enforcement uh, has provided assistance, the educational aspect, uh, emergency uh, aspect. And in 2020, Let's take someone that does, that does not live in that community. And in 2020, we all were faced with this pandemic and we mm-hmm. all had so many different barriers in front of us. And That's so right. if a person has a, a barrier of uh, access to transportation, getting to the hospital for emergency purposes, um, that is something very serious we need to really uh, look, in, look into. And I, I, mm-hmm. like I said, me... I just didn't think of that. And that's why I'm glad that an organization like you, like you and your, uh, your organization, Life Changers of Northeast Louisiana are bringing this to the forefront. Uh, you're actually uh, creating awareness of this. So district three, four and five, they, those areas, those districts uh, has the greatest needs in the community, but it sounded like in district five, Parkview Apartments, that, subdivision itself has some of the greatest needs in that district and really needs a little bit more attention. Yes, let me let me let me cut you one one minute. It's because of the magnitude of people that lives in Parkview. Parkview can be classified as a community of its own with so many people and children that live there, but it's isolated from everything that poor people needs to survive. You understand what I'm saying? I do. And, yeah, the basic need, the best basic necessities of life. But but this is what this is the the, the major uh, point that that we want to stress to people: the future of our children in Parkview. Okay, there's nothing. If you look at a child growing up in Parkview, and then look at the surroundings inside and the immediate vicinity of the complex, what is there to do for a child to do? To, that would help gravitate them from a lifestyle of crime and violence in Parkview. There's nothing to transition their minds. There's nothing to help them elevate from but the things that they know and they see every day. And with this pandemic, children are at home now about 80% of the time. And so that means the more exposure that they see is what their parents and the people around them are doing. And real quickly, I seen a video the other night uh, someone posted where ladies had, where some lady, young ladies had a, what you call a twerk party. And they were in thongs and they were half naked. Some of them didn't even have on panties. And they were in there and they were shaking and popping and twerking. And when you look, the camera swung around, there were three kids standing right in the midst of it, watching. And one of them was holding a, almost a newborn baby. The baby looked like it had to be about six or seven months. But that's the mind frame that children have in Parkview. So if that's what those children are exposed to 80% of the time, Brother Brian, tell me what they're going to do when they get up to the age of accountability where they know what they're doing. They're going to follow what they have been taught, just like we have. Some of us still have the morals and principles that our parents taught us when we were kids. A lot of people don't have that anymore, but that followed us. And that same attitude is going to follow these children. If all they see is violence, all they see is promiscuous uh, sexual acts. All they see is the different things that are going on in Parkview. They're going to gravitate to that lifestyle. The last murder that took place in Parkview were committed by juveniles. And I'm going to leave that there. Okay. All right. Well, I do want to uh, circle back and dig a little bit deeper. Just because of the subdivision that or the community that an individual lives in doesn't mean that they will duplicate that behavior. But it has to the behavior is a, a possibility of a learned behavior. And um, is it fair to say that it's not the majority of individuals that are uh, acting in a certain manner? It may be just a small, small population. 
And because if, and this small population is actually uh, attracting more attention than the those that are uh, attempting to do better, those that are actually doing good. Well, well, let's think about it, brother Brian. You was a kid once, I was a kid once. And growing up, every kid wants to fit in, okay? Every kid wants to be cool. But when all your environment produce is negativity, the negative is cool. And to be honest with you, throughout the world, especially through, uh, through social media and through different forms of, of communication, um, rap music and, and the radio stations and different things like that, uh, negativity is cool. Okay, so for the children that do want to overcome their situation and do want to exceed poverty or get out of Parkview and do something different, if we can't grab them now, then what other choice do they have? Because they're going to get to a point where they have to leave out the house and um, mingle with the rest of, of the kids. They're going to have to socialize. They're going to have to be in that environment. So unless their mind is strong and their parents at home are teaching them how to be independent thinkers and how not to be followers but leaders, then they are going to transition into their lifestyle because history tells us and shows us that these things occur if there's not someone there to deter them or to mentor them or to show them the correct way to do it. Okay, yeah, I think I get you now. Pretty much your outreach is focused on the children itself. Children that yeah. are just innocent yeah. in, in mind. And as they see these deviant acts take place, and if they're not given an alternative, they will only follow what they are, they will mimic and follow only what they see because mm -hmm. we all learn through images and any image, any image that we see, any image that we, that's being supported, we may believe that that's the proper manner to act, to behave and to portray ourselves. So children are all, well, I guess everyone, we need alternatives. Mm -hmm. We can make the best choice. That's right. And our, our primary, we, we, we're focusing on the whole part view. We, want, we don't want to just focus on the children because, see, that's why mentorship programs uh, fail is because we want to mentor the children without the parent. That's impossible because the children is with the parent more than it would a mentor. You take a children off an hour every three days or an hour a day and you take them off and buy them different things and talk to them a little bit and share different things here and there, it's helpful but not in the long run, not in future tense, because they're still exposed to the same lifestyle, the same environment, the same things that you're trying to keep them away from. So if you're not trying to interact with the parent, that means that nothing is going to change in the household and a child is only going to use you as a scapegoat when they need to get away and get what they need and do the things that they do, but they still have to come back to that environment. So I think the success is, is better to work, start off working with the child and then gradually begin to work with the parents so that the parent would limit the, even if the parent don't want to make a full change or transition, at least they can limit the things that they do in front of the child. Uh, they would put barriers up and, and make sure that the child is not exposed to the things that they're doing or the things that's going on for that child's future. But it helps for the parent to be involved. That's how mentorship is successful. But we can't just take people, children, and give them our own morals and our own principles and our few gifts and think that that's going to set them off to a bright future. We have to work with both. Okay. Every, le every generation uh, needs to be uh, engaged. And, 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 of course, if the adult, the parent, or the guardian the child is around that adult or guardian more so than anyone else, especially now, since uh, my understanding, you know, school is not in constantly. And so now that becomes their role model and they will mm -hmm. duplicate that. So it makes great sense. Ma makes great sense. So I tell you what, uh, I sure appreciate you, Damien, but let the, give me your information so the family can uh, know and um, know how to reach out to you or the organization uh, if they're seeking further assistance. Our organization is called the Light Changes of Northeast Louisiana. Our phone number is 318-557-1698. Our email address is the Life Changers of Northeast of N-E-L-A at gmail.com. That's T-H-E 
C-H-A-N-G-E-R-S-O-F-N-E-L-A at gmail.com. Right now, because of the pandemic, we are working remotely. Um, so we're not um, asking anyone to come to our location, but you can always reach us by email or by phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And we encourage everyone to reach out with us, uh, join us in our fight, and please let's help the people in Parkview. Uh, uh, the last thing I want to say is that we want people not to be comfortable being poor and not to be comfortable with their surroundings if that's not the surroundings that they want to be in. But we want people to have the mind frame to elevate from poverty to moderate income, from moderate income to home ownership, uh, from working um, to entrepreneurship, to living beyond what people expect of us, but to elevate not only as a people, but, but also as individuals and as citizens, we all need to elevate. All right. Hey, I appreciate that. What about any, you all have any social media uh, contacts? Uh, or yes. how can they contact you by social media? Uh, they can reach us on Facebook at the Life Changes of Northeast Louisiana. Okay, well, good. Well, Damien, I sure appreciate you squeezing me in today on Mother's Day. I know uh, you, you're going to get back out there in the community doing, doing what you do best, reaching mm -hmm. out, uh, giving life uh, through Life Changers. And I just want to say thank you for coming on the Voice of the Community here on KIEZ 106.7 FM. Anytime. Thank you.